Hi guys, welcome to Poseidon Sport Fishing Tackles and Chatter. The reason why we are having this session is to educate you guys about the various options that you guys can do in fishing from a boat. Most of us are actually sitting in the shore and actually waiting for the fish to come to us. Which is going to be more dependent on the luck. Because for a fish to move to you and for your bait to be in the right direction, the number of possibilities is actually less. So once you take a boat and you actually go looking out for the fish and there are spots which are little away from the shore which you normally can't access from the shore. So with the boat, you actually have more options and you can cover more area, more grounds and you go looking out for the fish, hunting for the fish rather than fish coming towards you. So uh, the first thing that I want to cover as part of the boat fishing, boat fishing has got its own risks. Number one thing is safety. No fish is worth losing your life for. So you need to make a call on that particular day based on the weather, tide conditions, and make sure that there's life jackets or life rings on the boat. If there's no life jackets or uh, life ring on the boat, I wouldn't go on the boat personally. Irrespective of how good the fishing is, someone might come back and say, that, okay, I've caught 20 fishes yesterday. There's no life jacket. It's okay, we'll adjust and go. I wouldn't go because I don't want to risk my life. Another thing, everyone who goes on the boat thinks that it's not going to happen to me. No one who's uh, got hurt on the boat or who died on a boat capsizing, would have expected that he's going to die. Normally, they think that, oh, it won't happen. But you'll never know. Even if you're a good swimmer, ocean is very, very risky. There is swells, there's waves, and you can't swim for a long duration with the swells and waves. And even when you try and come to the shore, most of the shore areas have got rocks. So it's not easy for you to get onto the rocks and climb in. So be very, very careful and make sure that it is safe. If then it's only going to cost you about 500 bucks for three to four hours of fishing, which is quite reasonable. And if you do it once or twice a month, it's quite cheap. And you'll have more possibilities of catching bigger fish rather than what you guys normally catch on the shore. In the shores, also sometimes you get big, but when you go on the boat, ideally you're targeting all those uh, wrecks or other ocean contours where you'll catch much bigger fish and more fishes. So it's not as expensive as people think, so that's a wrong, wrong consumption. Um, talking about wind and swells. So wind is something which impacts boat fishing mainly. When you're fishing from the shore, it doesn't matter. It's windy. You may not be able to cast far, but still you can cast and you can get away with it. But when it comes to boat fishing, wind plays a critical role because the direction of the wind and the swell. And unfortunately, where we are located in India, the ocean is completely open. So the swells actually are kind of the ripples which forms from a very long uh, area. For instance, it starts from Andaman and travels all the way to Chennai. So even if the wind kind of drops today, it takes one or two days for the actual swells to settle. Swells are nothing but once you go inside the ocean, you will actually see the wavy kind of a thing like a bump. And when the swells are low, it's more comfortable for you to go. If the swells are high, it's like going through multiple speed breakers. So it makes the boating really uncomfortable and it's unsafe as well. If the boat driver is not properly trained or qualified, there's a chance that he might actually go parallel to the wave and it might capsize your boat. So that's another critical thing. And always the boat captain needs to be looking at the waves and the swell and driving the boat. So if you guys happen to hire a local boat also, if you guys hook on to a fish, ask the uh, fish boat driver to look out for the swells rather than looking out for where the fish are is what where the rod is because we've had a couple of instances in Chennai itself and uh, a lot of known anglers were on the boat and the boat capsized and they actually lost everything they lost their mobile phone they lost their uh, glasses all their gear keys everything and uh, some guys were rescued some guys were tall enough and it was only about six foot so they kind of managed to stand in that area close to the shore and they got rescued but what i'm saying is we should try and avoid all this and we should call for a fishing trip only when the wind is less and the swell is less and there are tools that you can actually use to check the wind you can use v windy ty w i n d y t y there's an app and there's a desktop application as well so you can just open the website and you can actually check the uh, wind speed so wind has got two components the wind in itself and there's another component which is called as a gust. Wind is a normal blow. For instance, let's take a period of one hour. So the wind is continuous for the one hour. And in between, there is a stronger blow. They call it as gust. 
so the gust doesn't happen for the full duration it ha just happens for 10 15 minutes but sometimes the gust could be so high that it will all of a sudden actually uh, create a lot of swells so you have to watch for the wind as well as the gust when you're actually looking at the app and uh, i'll do a separate session on the actual app in itself because i need a computer to show you guys to how to see it but if you download it it's quite easy you choose the city you are in if you choose chennai and if you just go through it will have that it'll have the swell height as well it will say the swell is 1.5 meters today so if you choose another date and just go through the hours so it will say that okay today morning is only 0.3 meters swell so anything below 1 meter is doable ideally it should be below 0.5 for the swell anything over 0.5 is going to be rough anything over 1.52 meters it's a no go so with more than 1.5 meters do not go out that day and also before the trip look out and see how the sea is when you're seeing the sea from the shore it will always look calm in respect to how big the swell is one tip to know how big the swell is from the shore is you watch one single boat which is moving close to the shore or if there's no boats probably wait for some time you will obviously see some fishermen's boat move and watch that boat carefully this what the swell does is that you'll actually see the boat coming above the wave and go down so you'll see how much of the boat is going down sometimes it will be swells will be so high that you will see that boat it will slowly go in the swell and you won't see the any anyone in the boat even the guys who are standing and then slowly it will come up means that swell is high next instance you will see that the boat goes slightly in and comes out so you will be able to see the full guy probably only his knee level is kind of going inside the swell when you're watching from the shore so that's what the swells are so based on that you can also make a call that okay the swell is high or the swell is low if it's only covering till his knee level or approximate you know if it's just covering his boat and then coming up you know that okay the swell is not bad and you can head out and always uh, head out as group like i said make sure that you're wearing life jackets and um, head out so we've covered uh, wind and swell and uh, the weather reading tools and also there is a tide re re uh, reading tool that most of you guys might use um, tide for fishing okay. so there's a app so you can use that google and you choose your city and that's one of the most accurate for our indian waters so you can choose the day and it will tell what tide it is and what time or the tide it is tides um, most of you guys might already know in a day we'll have two high tides and two low tides almost for all throughout the month and once or twice a month there might be only three tides that's because of the timing duration each tide is up approx about 6 to 7 hours so most of the month we will have two high tides and two low tides so high tide is when the water is coming more towards the shore and raising towards the shore so it will keeps on rising for 6 hours to 7 hours and then slowly it will start receding so when it's coming in it's called as incoming tide or high tide when it's going out they call it as receding tide or low tide so the tide plays a critical role in how the fish behave the fishes use the tides to actually cruise so they come in with the tide and go out with the tide and in some areas if it's like a pocket of water or something and near the piers it doesn't really matter it will bite for the entire duration of the time but when you're going out a little bit deeper the tide makes a change and the right window to fish is 90 minutes before and after a tide change i'm not saying that you won't catch a fish after that if you have a line in the water and if the fish is hungry you might still catch a fish but the maximum window is 90 minutes before the tide change so there is low high tide and again low and again high so it could be low to high or high to low so you know the peak so it will show that the high tide is 8 o'clock so you can do for fish 90 minutes before and 90 minutes after for it to be effective and also the timing is also quite critical fishes feed more during dawn and dusk they are programmed this way fishes use three senses to feed one is vision and one is smell and the third thing is vibration this is what they all feed on and why fishes uh, take lures or live bait in the dark they still can't see is because all the fishes have got a vertical line on their body which picks up vibration so even in pitch dark they can't see anything but they can pick up the vibration because it's got that line running in its body to pick up vibration so when a lure or a bait is moving they still go in that direction and they are so accurate and they are so highly programmed we think they're just a fish but they are actually amazing creatures they can actually pick up vibration and they just go and attack that's how they feed in the night that is one and second thing in the night is using smell because obviously they can't see but in the morning they can use all three senses they can see they can smell as well as they can yeah so that's the thing um 
so why boat fishing is more attractive for the fishes how the fishes feed is fishes normally uh, round up the bait fishes and they make them into bait balls as you see in most of the videos and all that you will see in one area where all these small fishes are all splashing on top so if you think of that so this is the top water so for a fish predator to go and catch a small fish is not easy so what they do is they try and all gang up and try and push the bait school up up and up and after this they know that they can't go anywhere else so they're stuck so it's like one way so you're pushing all the fish into that one way so all the bait school is up so what these predators do is they come and scoff off on these so when you're going out on the water the first thing is look out for any activity so if you see birds or something diving or if you see a bait school on top which is a good area to troll so you choose that area and you go and try and fish and also make sure that if you see a bait ball do not go on top of the bait ball directly for instance you see a bait ball so how you will be trawling is do not take your boat in straight in because it will completely push them away and the bait ball will disappear but the predators also will get spooked so this is not the right way so if you're going in a boat you see a bait school head this way out out and then slowly turn the boat so what will happen imagine that this is your boat you're going and you have lures that you're trawling in the back so once you go here and you turn your lures will come exactly in the strike zone so you'll have more hits on this so never ever get into the center of the bait school there is a complete wrong thing to do so in australia and other countries if they some, see someone getting into the bait school they'll get so angry that they'll come and stop near your boat and they'll actually have a go at you that you've spoiled it for everyone because when they see a bait school a lot of people want to try and come and fish outside the bait school and outside the bait school is where you get most of the hits because the fishers think that when your lure is coming outside they think that okay this fish is actually scattered outside the bait school and they'll try and target them as a easy target so never get into the center of a bait school um and also your boat is a fish attracting device in itself so like i said so when they're actually pushing all the fish up and feeding they create a lot of noise on top and a lot of bubbles so same thing is what your boat does so when your boat is moving your engine is actually a fish attracting device so the engine is moving so if you imagine how it looks underwater it creates a lot of bubbles a lot of noise so your boat moves on top so i'm a fish sitting here so i'm just looking at the top of the water so there's some bubble trail going up so i'm programmed to go and eat into the bait school because when the bait school is already formed i'm a lazy fish so i'm just going past someone has already collected all the bait and they think that it's already sitting there so for me it's an easy meal so they come straight and they hit the bait school and if your lure is going there when you behind the boat engine behind the bubbles they'll come and actually have a go at them so your boat is actually a fish attracting device in itself so i'll go through how to set the trawling setup and all that in a minute and um, lures and colors this is a very debatable topic a lot of people say that fish can't see they can't see colors they are color blind actually it's false fish can see colors fish has got cone receptors in its eye and it's been proved that scientifically they can see colors but the thing is probably they can't see colors as how we do probably we might see yellow as one this shade but they might see it in a different shade but it's been proved that fishes can see colors so that's one of the reasons why some lures actually perform much better than the other lures so again in dark water and other colors you will have to choose the lure accordingly if when you are fishing clear waters let's assume the water is crystal clear so that time you should be using all these shiny lures the shiny lures will work better but in chennai side normally it's mostly murky so try and use more dark color lures but some season you will see that the water is really clear another way to see is you see the water and you see behind your boat engine where the boat is creating the wake that color will actually tell you what the exact color of the water is underneath because it's digging up stirring up water from like half meter underneath sometimes the top water is a little dirty but half meter down it might be clear so have a look at where the engine is creating that uh, bubbles so you'll know the water color so clear water you can use something like this or something like this this will be very productive these kind of colors if the water is murky like i said chennai is most of the time murky in murky water and this is a all time favorite everyone uses a redhead for poppers for uh, trawling lures also redhead is very popular and it is it works in both clear water and murky water that's why it's actually quite popular and also the contrast picks up the fish's attention that's why you will see that most of the time more than a plain lure you will see that lot of lures comes with a contrast 
either it could be uh, this or it could be uh, black and red this is also quite popular for barracuda in the evening so when you're fishing late in the evening you'll get this yesterday i got the gt on one of this it was almost dark but it still picked up and normally this one works well in the evening timings so clear water silver silvery colors or uh, red and white and murky water you can use all the fluoro colors all the fluoro colors will work good or you can use something like these liquid lime colors and all these colors will work good in the murky water so fishes moods also change each day they might feed on a different color so always try and have different spreads when you are boat when you are trawling so coming into the trawling technique in itself so this is a boat so you may have a single engine or a double engine so setting the trawl is a very very important part on how you are going to set up your lures and how it's going to look and also to catch a fish you need to think how your lure is going to look underwater so if you just cast the lures and you just pull you may not catch the fish you need to think where the lure is how it's going to look underwater how is it being presented so presenting that is very very critical so setting the trawling pattern so when you are fishing probably from a normal fisherman's fiber boat you can easily trawl three lures so one can trawl in the center so the way to do it is you get one person to sit in this corner one here or you can even make them sit here and here and what you do is actually you hold your rod as much outside as possible when you are releasing the line so let's assume this is the this is the boat i'm sitting on i'm not holding it right behind me like this you hold the rod as extended as possible so the guy sitting on the right so i'm holding it like this so my right arm is extended and the guy who is sitting in the left have it as extended as possible like this what you are doing by this is actually you are putting your line extended your line is getting extended so it's not going to get tangled with each other which allows you to trawl multiple lines you can even trawl four lines if you do it properly on a boat so the more lures you have in the water obviously you're going to have more chances so if this guy is going to have it here here the third person trawling you might get all the lines tangled so you get this person to hold it here you get this person to hold it here so what's going to happen the line is going to run like this this line is going to run like this so you're giving an opportunity so with most of the fiber boats you can see that the driver is standing somewhere here so maybe you can sit here and release another line here okay and the guy who's sitting in the center holds it right behind him like this you just make sure that you actually lock your reel and hold it and you just sit like this that's it when you get a hit you'll know and then you can change so if you put it left or right again you're going to tangle with the other guy so this way you can actually trawl three lures 1 2 and 3 and again from top this looks fine but if you're all releasing the same length it's not going to attract much fish so what you need to do like i said again the bait school concept if the when the boat is creating all that wake and the bubbles you need to have those lures coming in different length so it need, needs to look like the bait is scattered and the fishes predators look for the easy target so they think that okay one is spooked and on its coming out of the bait school they go and hit it first rather than the bait school so you need to run these at different lengths so don't run them at all one length you need to run them at different length and what length you are running it and how do you know that you are running it at different length one thing you can use the multicolored line and normally on the box it will say that it is 5 meters or 10 meters of the color chain so you can let the line out the first color goes and you know okay i've got 10 meters i've got 20 meters i've got 30 meters i'm a lazy person i can't be counting all that so what i do is you can as a user line counter as they call it so what you do you, you fix this on the rod and put your line through this so it will exactly tell how many meters or you can even set it as feet how much has gone out and then you can reset and you can use it on the second rod and you can do that and again if you don't want to use this the easiest way which i do based on practice if you do 3 4 times you'll get the practice you don't want to do this you don't want to use a colored line you want to use a normal braided line what i do i i'll, I'll get one person to release the line first i'll tell him okay go and i last the second person to go so this person releases a line for let's assume for uh, 50 seconds and i ask him to close then i'll still be releasing for uh, probably about 
two minute or whatever approx i'm just telling so depending on how much line you want to have in back but again don't have it too much behind as well the maximum probably i would probably tall them is around max the longest probably around 80 again this is just a there's no fixed length but don't have it too much behind because you want to try and bring it close to that bubble trail not too much and so this one for this one one has to be the longest and one shorter and the third one much shorter and again depending on what uh, lure you are using normally the shortest one try and use a deep diver so so coming into the so let's assume that you are trolling three rods so this is how it's looking from top so what lures are you using here so you use different colors don't use the same color so probably use a red and white here fluoro green and a silver so try and have different colors because like i said each day the fish might feed on a different color and as soon as it hits on one color don't go change all to the same color wait for the second hit for the day if both the hits are on the same color then try and maybe change another lure for example i'm getting hit on redded okay if i change everything to redded then maybe i'm sometimes i may not get hit redded okay again i'm trolling again i'm getting on redded then what i'll do i'll pick up another redded and change another one of the lures to redded so that's how you kind of uh, play around with the colors each day like i said it will be different but the thumb rule and how fishes go darker colors use the one and the silver ones so this is how it's looking up so now let's look at how the fishes are going to see this and what water column you are pulling them so this is the water top and your boat not good at the drawing so this is your boat and you got multiple lines you got one if you're trolling the same depth lure again you will only get less hits the idea number one is to stagger the lure so you're having a dip different depths so fish coming from whatever direction you're covering more grounds in the back the next thing is you have to cover different water column for example each lure will have a diving depth on the lip this one dives for 2 meters there are lures which dive for uh, these days you get even something which dives for 30 meters and there are different ones that you can actually use so this is 15 feet 20 feet 25 feet 30 feet and i've got the 2 meter models so if i run 2 meters on everything will i catch more fish no because everything is on the same height running in the same direction what you have to do is you have to again have them at different depth so i'll run this as at the straight line so i'm running this at 2 meter i'm running another one at 5 meter and i'm running another one at 7 meter normally have the deepest one shorter because it's going to be deep and how to release this as well i'll tell you how to release this the longest one has to be released first so who is going to go longest you go first he goes second and you go third and when you're actually pulling the lures back in for example you're making a u turn with this method even if you make a u turn you don't have to take your lines in even though it cross it won't criss cross because you got this quite long the shorter and the shorter so you won't tangle them up and so like i said when you're releasing it longest first shortest last when you're bringing your line back in for whatever reason if someone gets a fish hook up others try and pull your line in so at that time what you will do is you will get the shortest one first longest one last so the other way around otherwise what will happen if you bring in the longest one first it will get tangled with the other ones so try and use different water depths and that will increase your chances of catch catching a fish so you have them at different lengths and you have them at different depths so when a fish is seeing from a uh, underwater some fish might be uh, shut down for the day some days only the top water lures get hit only the 2 meter lure will get hit sometimes the 7 meter lure will only get hit so you will have to have different dip diving depth lures don't have the same depth so that's a main thing to do and most of the sh shore sides also uh, the depth in chennai that around the rocks are about 5 to 6 meters so when you using don't use uh, 7 meters good when we are going much more deeper but for the near shore fishing you'll get lot of fishes actually on the walls so if you troll probably like uh, 20 meters from the wall in the morning and evening you will actually get lot of hits in that direction 
and like I said, they are only about five to six meters, so don't use a seven meter lower because you might get that stuck in the rocks. Um, so two and five or three, anything from two till five are the best lures to use for um, trawling. And also, like I said, the best time would be dawn and dusk because the fishes, they want to try and feed with all the three senses first and as a second backup. So that's why as soon as the first light comes up, a lot of fishermen say that the best bite window is early morning when the first the sun comes up. Even before the sun comes up, they call it first light. Before the sun comes out of the horizon, already there are some light rays are out. So the fish starts feeding from then. For the next few hours, they are more active. And even for the rest of the day, they will still feed. But this time, will they will be more hungry. And they try and as soon as the light comes in, they are programmed to go on a feeding frenzy. Again in the evening, when you probably fish, so probably I would suggest that if you are going for a trawling trip, probably do a 6 till 9. Or evening if you are doing, do a 4 till 7. That will be the best ideal time that you want to do for trawling. But if you want to do jigging, jigging works all day. You can jig all day, you will still catch all day. Trawling is more productive, especially close to the shores on this time. Later in the afternoon, if you want to still trawl, you have to go much deeper. Deeper fishes, they don't uh, care. They are still feeding. The, but close to the shore, once it gets bright, they kind of get spooked. So they move to the deeper waters. So that's what uh, it is. So we've colored lures and colors. Colored the lure retrieving. So this, so like I said, this way you can trawl multiple lines. So you're increasing the chances. And also, once you get a hookup, like I said, others try and take your line in or you're going to end up with tangles and you're going to lose the fish. And also, always maintain the tension on the line. Never ever leave slack because mostly you will get barracudas or mackerel or GT. Every fish will try and shake its head off and the lure will actually pop out. So, try and uh, make sure that others pull the line in. And uh, while pulling the line in, make sure that someone is ready with a gaff or either a net to scoop it because if you get a toothy critter like a barracuda or mackerel you don't want to end up putting your hand in you will be uh, bitten off so may ensure that someone actually carries a gaff or use a net and the other angler pull your rod in and try and help him out to land the fish and then you guys can again start the trawling pattern so where to fish so from top it's all water so but where do we fish you will have to look for structures where the things are and I've already done a video and it's on my YouTube on how to see structures on what the water depth is. For instance, ocean is like a desert, it's completely flat. So this is the water, so it's completely flat. So these are the rocks, the shore, so it's completely flat. And ocean contours are the structures in the water in itself. So if you use the app, it will tell you that, okay, here it's 5 meters, here it's 7 meters, here it's 9 meters. This area is a good area to be trawling. Because where there's structure, there's a lot of bait schools and the predators are here trying to feed on them. So these are called ocean contours. So look for structures. In Chennai, we have few wrecks. So one wreck is right outside the Chennai port and there's one wreck which is a shallow wreck around the 5 meters around the shore and even those wreck details and everything is on the uh, Navionics app and I've explained how to use the app and how to find these things so you'll see the wreck symbol which is like this on the app something like this and once you point your arrow on it it's a free app so you can download but if you want to download the uh, detailed map they charge you I think around 2000 or 2500 very useful app to have so at least one person should have it even when you are going quite deep, when you can't see the shore, you can still use that GPS app and you can navigate back because it will show you where your boat is positioned. So when you are going out in the water also, use like a, some waterproof pouch for your phone or a lanyard so you don't drop uh, your phone in the water. And try and leash everything that you have on the boat. Normally you get those clips, you can get clips like this, carabiner clips and attach a line. So the bag, so I will put a clip on the bag tie a cord, even a nylon line and have another clip. So I'll probably clip this somewhere on the boat. So you know the boat topples, I mean it shakes, the bag falls, I can still retrieve the bag. So, so use something like this and secure most of your bags and all that. Mobile phones try and keep a lanyard and you can use this app. So that way even when you're heading a little bit further, there's a mackerel reef which is about 15 kilometers away from shore. So if you guys head straight from the Chennai port, you will see a lot of boats there during season. If they say that there's a lot of mackerel, 
and you go out there, you'll see a lot of lo locals trawling in that area. They'll either be trawling using uh, lures or they'll be trawling using uh, live bait or dead bait as well. So, and again, I've actually done another video on how to actually tie a live bait rig and you can adjust that uh, rig and you can actually put the hooks either in the front if the bait profile is small or in the video I explain how to actually tie a two hook rig wherein you will have one hook in the front and one hook in the back so that way it's easy to troll so there are other types of lures as well that the commercial fishermen use so they use something called the trawling boards and they actually use these kind of spoons behind so th what this board does is it actually dives deep and uh, for instance if I'm using a two meter lure I still want to get it deep so this is a K6.0 board so this will go 6 meters, this lower goes 2 meters, 6 plus 2. So using the same 2 meter lower, I'm taking it 6 meters, sorry 8 meters, 6 plus 2, 8 meters I'm taking it down. But the commercial fishermen normally uh, are not aware that there are different lures in the market which gives dive. And these are a little bit expensive so that they tend to use the other version which is easy for them. Now just going into the tackle, what tackle uh, to use, what rods to use, when trawling on a boat, try and use the shortest rod as possible. Something like this, this is not expensive, I don't want to name the brand, the different brands in the market, but this one you can get here for 2300 or 2500 bucks odd. And short rod is always best for the boat, 8 feet, 10 feet is good for casting from the shore, but on a boat you want something which is like short, shortest, the better and use something that can is rated for at least 50 pound of line because when you're trawling there's a chance that you might hook up onto a big GT or a big mackerel or a big uh, barracuda. So what line to use for trawling anything uh, bare minimum is 30 try and use 50 again like I said you might end up with the fishes running into the rocks and wrecks so 50 LB is idle 30 is little light but if you only have 30 you can still go ahead with it and real size anything um, 5000 and above is recommended because you're going to have about 70 or 80 meters line outside so you need to have that enough line to fight the fish once you hook the fish and also another main thing to note never ever stop a boat as soon as you get a hit so for instance we're trawling so one guy gets a hit don't immediately stop trawl for another 30 seconds because what happens normally the fishes are traveling in the school so once one guy gets hit wait for 30 seconds or 20 seconds don't stop immediately keep trawling and tell the guy that keep going don't stop the boat drive and after that someone make a call someone kind of captain the guy and say that, okay now stop because most of the times that's when you double and triple the fish so you'll get a double hookup but if you hook down the fish and you stop what happens in the back the lure is coming and you stop so the lure stop the fishes look at it and they kind of think oh, what's going on when the lure is moving they kind of get attracted and come all of a sudden it stops swimming they kind of get shocked to see what's going on so don't stop so continue at least for uh, 20 to 30 seconds so that way you'll actually multiply the hookups in that areas in uh, some instance so we went through the rod uh, reel line and uh, what line to use mono or braid that's an again uh, depending on what kind of fishing you are doing the best one to use probably for shore fishing is uh, braided line but if you're going to go for deep sea fishing for big game for marlin and tuna and all that that time nylon line is better the reason being nylon has got stretch and these big fishes are uh, normally jumping high and they're about 100 200 kilos so with, if you're using braided line what's going to happen is they're actually going to snap in the pressure since the mono has got that stretch it actually helps them that's why most of the uh, fishermen fishing for marlin tuna and everyone they'll be using nylon lines and the multiplayer reel to have a lot of line on there and also again the same concept even if you're going offshore and deep sea fishing the reason why they stop after 30 seconds is like when you're trawling using mono line the minute you get hit if you stop what's going to happen the line is not going to stretch enough to hook the fish because nylon has got stretched so when you run that extra 30 uh, seconds or 20 seconds the nylon also stretches the fish is hooked on so this pulling the line is getting stretched so it sets the hook more properly so that's another reason why they use uh, longer uh, time after it's being hooked when they're especially using uh, nylon line so we've gone through the trawling pattern and other things and I think I've covered the most of the mono and braid so from um, the braid obviously there's another question to, to use fluoro or uh, normal mono leader 
for trawling mono leader is more than sufficient because the water the line is going to be on top of the water most of the unless you are using deep divers and you're going to be trawling crystal clear waters for instance if i'm fishing andaman and things like that the water is like crystal clear there probably i can use uh, fluorocarbon leader because the line will be visible if i'm using the normal one with the fluorocarbon the advantage is the refractive index of fluorocarbon is equivalent almost equivalent to the refractive index of the water so the fishes are not going to see the line and with fluoro the zero stretch so what's going to happen your braid has got zero stretch again your fluorocarbon has got zero stretch so it can actually pull the hook out of the fish you need at least a little bit of stretch so the mono is better for the near shore fishing and if the water is clear then you can go for fluoro but you don't have to unless you are like fishing in the crystal clear waters and that's how fishes see colors as well like um, the light bounces off the materials and they actually your uh, sensors in your eyes actually picks up different colors so each one has got a different color from the spectrum so when the light travels as they say it goes in and it comes out a different so your eye picks up different wavelengths that's how you see color so same when the color of the fluoro is same as water they both gonna look same for them that's how they actually don't see them um so we've covered what leader to use so how to attach your lure in itself you can use uh, fast attach clips which are easy try and use something with a, a, a small uh, swivel because it's gonna um, reduce the line twists because you're going to be trawling lures and even if the fish is actually jumping and all that it's better to use a swivel so you don't get uh, the lines um, tangled up pen things like that or you can use a normal clip or this but use something as small as possible don't use something huge so if you use something huge what happens it's going to spoil the action of your lure depend on what size lure you're using as well near shore probably anything from 160 is ideal don't go anything above 160 for near shore fishing 160 or you get 140 models or you can go smaller but don't go anything bigger than 160 for our waters it's too big and like i said using a small lure and such a big swivel what's going to happen it's going to spoil the action the lure is not going to look natural our idea is to make it look natural and make it more attractive for the fishes and why do fishes actually go for the lures is because the these lures are all made to actually stand out in water from color also there's rattles and noises to make it more attractive like i said the fishes feed on vibration look and smell so this is got apart from shell it's got other two so it's going to attract the fish even in the dark water so that's how uh, they actually get attracted to the lures and lures actually come with a lot of wobbling action so the normal fish swims normal way a wounded fish actually is when it is dying actually create lot of vibration and it's in pain when it's going to about to die so that's why uh, lures are more attractive for the fishes and they actually go for them now uh, we've covered that we've covered how to attach the terminal tackle um landing the fish like i said uh, gaff it or um, use the net and dispatching the fish looking after your catch so when you're going out fishing and uh, you're fishing for a full evening don't catch it throw it out leave it in the open for next 2 hours i fishing in the morning don't leave it in the sun what's going to happen it's going to get dried and also the best way to keep your catch is actually have like a they call it a fish priest or you can even use a normal uh, puri or rolling pin have a wooden one in the boat and strike on its head i know it sounds cruel but it's good for the fish because you're not going to have it on the boat which is going through a lot of stress and a lot of pain because obviously it's out of water it can't breathe it's gasping for breath it's going to build up a lot of uh, uh, adrenaline in the body so what it's going to do the fish taste also changes a lot of japanese don't buy fish, fish which is not properly killed they actually use different methods where and actually they bleed the fish a certain way cut the gill plates you can do that as well so hit the fish in the head on just on top of the head where the both the eyes actually are coming up so hit there and also if possible if you have a knife on board you handling knife on board is a little risky because boat is always going to be wobbly but if you can if the boat is okay or as soon as you go to the shore try and cut the gills and let it bleed out so that way you're letting the blood out and also you're killing the fish so always but hit the fish and try and kill it as cruel as it sounds that's the best thing that we can actually do and um, if you have ice or something or ice box try and have some ice 
and put some salt in it it's called as ice slurry and pour a little bit of water it actually goes beyond ice temperature the ice slurry so once you put your fishes in there it will taste much better and also once you take the fish home once you got it cleaned don't dump it all in as one bag normally what i do i have multiple ziploc bags i put five slices and i don't put them on top of each other i put them try and spread them out or if you have only less bags it's okay but if you have let's assume three kilos of fish don't put all three kilos of fish in one bag S separate them into smaller portions what you will feed on a typical day normally i have a one kilo bag and i put them in three different bags i have three kilos so what it's going to do whatever i want to feed i take it from the freezer so i deep freeze them whatever i want to feed tomorrow i'll take one bag today and put it in the normal fridge next day morning it's all thawed and ready to use that way your fish is looked after and it's going to taste much fresher rather than keeping the whole 3 kilos there trying to defrost it once you defrost it don't uh, freeze it again you lose the taste fish normally stays good for 3 months in good freezers if you're maintaining the right temperature which below 6 degrees or some fr freezers you get uh, deep freeze as well normally mine is like about minus 16 cuz i do a lot of fishing and um, sometimes you want to store the fish i want to make sure that it's properly stored so i use the deep freeze so minus 16 degrees so it comes good for 3 months so that's the thing and also sustainable fishing when you're fishing try and be responsible for instance one day you might keep on catching fish uh take what you need don't take a whole lot from the ocean cuz it's always going to be there take what's necessary for the day or maybe two don't load up the boat there's no restrictions in india but in most of the countries they have restrictions on species based on scientific data so they may maybe say that there's like bag limit for mackerel is two per person or one per person and things like that so if you guys go out and you catch a lot of fish try and release some as well don't take everything also try and release all the small fishes don't take the small fishes the reason why the number of predators in our coast is reducing is because because the commercial fishermen catch everything in the nets respect to what size it is they catch the smallest to the smallest because they want to dry it and they want to sell it so what's going to happen the predators don't have any food to feed on so they just move out looking for food so wherever they find the smaller fish they go there so wherever there's a lot of human population the predators are reducing and over a period of time this is impacted a lot and if you speak to any fisherman commercial fisherman they'll say that the days are really tough how it was 10 15 years or 20 years ago it's not the same so let's be responsible let's not uh, take the small catches let's try and release unless you are using it for live bait so you can use sebiki and catch live bait which is another technique for trolling as well like i said the rig go through my youtube video on how to do it to catch live bait you can actually go near the boys which are around the chennai harbor and other areas you will see boys which is floating which are good areas for catching small fishes so use the sebiki have a small uh, weight in the bottom drop it let it go to the bottom just jig slowly and you hook up lot of bait fishes and use them for live bait and similar technique but when you're doing live bait don't have multiple lines out maximum you can have is only two and slow troll the trolling speed is also important so when you're actually trolling lures the idle speed that you can troll for the lure will normally be written on the back so you can look at this it says 4 to 8 knots idle speed for most of the species is 5 to 6 knots that's the idle speed or you can go max up to 7 but don't go over 7 not because when you go at a higher speed the lure doesn't swim because that's what they rated to swim for and also you can use smaller profile lures as well uh, like i said the biggest that you go for is 160 but a lot of smaller profile lures which goes deep as well i caught one uh, 16 kilo grouper on one of these small lures if the hooks are good and strong it will actually still catch big fishes for you because the fish feeds on all sizes of fishes um any questions walls you said walls what that means walls ocean ocean walls yeah it is you're talking about the areas to troll no you said walls where the wall starts reef walls la sonninga the, the con 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 contours is it no 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 the underwater uh, reefs and all wall is asking about that underwater structures walls yeah so the like i said we use the navionics mm. so you will see the depth so it will have uh, depth so it will say that this area is 7 meters this area is 10 meters again it goes like this so these are the areas which are good for trawling because this is where all the rocks and all the bait fishes will be like i said even the wreck which is there are few wrecks like i said one outside the harbor 
and there is one uh, near Royapuram side on the fourth or fifth pier. So those wrecks. So this is the water. The wreck is a sunken ship, which is sitting in the ocean floor. So what this does is uh, gets a lot of algae and things, and a lot of fishes. Small fishes find it as a good place for them to live and hide. They feel more secure next to some structures. So the big predators are all going to be here. So that's one. And again, like I said, using the map when you go through, you can see um, probably I think you might have I might have mentioned about the ocean wall and those um, ocean shelf, continental shelf. It might go and you'll have see sudden drops. This will be 100 meters. This will be. 130 meters so these are also very good spots normally close to the show you don't see this we have two drop offs in chennai this one, first drop off goes from 100 to 130 and again from here this goes straight and then again it goes to 1000 meters so these are the two drop offs that we have and the first drop off is around 30 kilometers from show second drop off is about 50 kilometers from show so these are the spots which are good again the reason being the sudden drop so there's a lot of ocean current pushing here and the current pushes the water up so high pressured water is a lot of bait fishes a lot of uh, minerals and other things stirred up so a lot of small bait fishes and a lot of predators so these kind of areas are what you actually look for while trawling and again like i said close to the shore you can trawl close to the walls those areas will be productive in early morning and early evening so the chennai coast so we have all the rock walls here rock walls here so this is the harbor entrance so all these sides you can trawl keep trawling up and down keep trawling up and down few times probably about 20 meters away from this and all these channels the shipping channels these are quite deep so these are about 20 meters this is about 10 meters so the fishes use these as a channel to navigate up and down so incoming tide they move in outgoing tide they move out so they keep moving on this way so this area is a good spot to trawl because there's a sudden drop off so we are seeing this from top from underneath how this looks so it goes from here to like this again like this again like this this is a shipping channel so this area is going to be a lot of bait fish so that's why this area is good to trawl or you can even trawl these lines and again you'll see these lines on navionics so that will actually help you because from top, it's all going to look the same. If you use the Navian app, you'll know where you are. So you'll know that, okay, I'm on the edge of the channel. It's a good area or I'm fishing here. Or like I said, there are piers on Roy Puram side. So you can go here and trawl around the edge, come out, trawl around the edge, come out, trawl around the edge. There's a good place for all groupers. And if you slow trawl uh, some of these lures, you will get uh, Baramudia. So these are good lures for Baramudia, smaller ones. Baramudia are more lazy. For Baramudia, you have to trawl much slower probably around uh, three knots and even that speed that you're trawling is showed on the Navionics app so that app helps you both locate where you are also see what speed you're traveling in so these jetties are a good area and trawling here is also a good place to fish any other question the safety measurements. yeah but uh, while going inside the sea uh, we will get seasick right? yeah for seasickness you actually have some tablets that you can take for instance, some guys might look strong, but still they might get seasick. Doesn't mean that they're weak. Just that the liquid in their ear, some people tend to have the thing wherein when they're like not balanced, when they shake, the liquid in the air actually shakes and they actually feel the vomiting sensation. So what you can do, there's warmy kind, Amyset tablets available in the pharmacy. Take it 30 minutes before the trip and you won't feel nauseated. Also, these days you do get uh, stickers, which you can use also for seasickness. You put it behind your ear and things like that. But the normal tablet, which is about two two rupees per tablet, that will do the job. Warmy kind, Amy set. Type of foods? Type of food. Try and have light food when you're on the boat. If you have seasickness, normally I tend to eat more when I'm on the boat, because oh. like I said, I'm used to it. That's number one. Second, I'm, I don't get seasick. Is it advisable to be in an empty stomach? Empty stomach. If you have vomiting sensation, if you are seasick, then it's advisable to be in an empty stomach. Also keep uh, hydrated, because in the sun you get dehydrated very soon on the boat. Yeah, but unless you are seasick, you don't have to be empty stomach. Have light food as much as possible if you are doubtful about your body state. But once you go a few times on the boat, you'll know if you are seasick or not. Like I said, someone might be very hefty and bulky and built up. He might be seasick. Another one might be really puny and he might be strong. He'll be standing on the boat more strong. So 
So it's not related to the person, it's related to their uh, fluid in the ear, which some people get used to, they don't have the effect. Same thing, like some people have sea, uh, air sickness, some people have travel sickness when they're climbing the hill and down. So again, it's all because of the fluid which is in the ear, the pressure creates and they throw up. So these tablets will help you to overcome that. Any other questions? Yeah, that's a very important question. I forgot to cover that. Normally, don't have too much of tight drag as well. Normally, I would say that probably 4 to 5 kilo drag is sufficient enough. So, when you're pulling the line from the reel, it should be like this. Don't set full drag because what will happen is when the fish strikes, you're going to end up losing the rod as well because it's too stiff. So, you need to have it in such a way that because you're not going to stop immediately on a boat. There's no break on the boat. So, once you're holding the rod, and it hits unless you have a rod holder here you're going to be holding it in your hand so it will probably take you another 10 or 20 meters for the boat to stop so that way if you're keeping full drag it's going to pull the rod out of your hand so that's number one number two when you're trawling and putting too much pressure on the fish's mouth it'll hook will actually come out it'll tear the fish's mouth also unless it's a gt where the mouth is quite strong the rest of the fish is quite uh, hard so four to five kilo drag approx is sufficient enough. Anything else? All good. So you guys get onto the water and keep us posted on how it is. Ah, um, you can go and hire these uh, f f fishermen boats, fiber boats. Or you can take our boats as well, or you can um, hire the local fishermen's boat also. So uh, they are normally experienced. They're always on the water. So those will be experienced, but watch out, ensure that they're not drunk because a lot of these fishermen are normally drunk in the morning itself. So make sure they're not drunk and if they're drunk, don't get on the boat because they have to be on the senses and they need to be in a proper condition. That's why I'm saying life jacket, even if the boat capsizes, I'm wearing a life jacket, I'll be happily floating and slowly I'll swim even if the shore is two kilometers because like I said, you can't come and get into the rock walls. So it's all rock walls, there's no sandy beach, the boat capsizes here. I'm thinking, okay, I'm only 100 meters away from the shore, but still, I can't come and climb on the rocks because there are a lot of barnacles on the rocks and the water will push, the waves will keep pushing you on. So I might have to swim all the way here looking for a beach, sandy beach or somewhere. So that's why I'm saying wear a life jacket, it's quite safe. So even if the boat driver is not uh, good enough, your life jacket will save you. That's why life jacket is always a must. Without life jacket, do not go out on a boat. Is there a rescue boat system? No rescue boat, boat in Chennai. So if a boat is toppled, is, is there a way it can be set right again? Or? Uh, uh, no, normally what, hap no, no, normally what happens is first thing the fisherman will run for his life. Mm -hmm. He'll try to, because what will happen is like once the boat caps is the guy who doesn't know swimming even or even if the guy who knows swimming gets scared and the, the tendency is to hold the other guy. So even if the other guy is a good swimmer, this guy will actually drown him. So the tendency the boat drivers normally will try to save their own life. As soon as the topples, they'll try and go to the shore so you are kind of left there that's why with a life jacket you are still floating so you won't panic the first thing to do is do not panic you are wearing a life jacket once you fall and the life jacket has to be tight don't wear life jacket which is loose the life jacket has to be tight it has to feel a little uncomfortable because if it's loose what happens when you fall in the water with the pressure the life jacket actually slips through your head and it goes out so the life jacket has to be tight and also you have to use the right size life jacket there are different sizing in it the small large medium and also the weight uh, mentioned on the life jacket. Some life jackets are uh, rated only for up to 50 kilos. Some life jackets up to 80 kilos. So based on your weight, you need to match the life jacket as well. Another way uh, that we actually do in Australia is, even though it's rated for 80 or 90 kilos and I'm 90 kilos, I still wear it and we do a pool test. So we wear the life jacket and I actually jump into the swimming pool to see if it actually floats. Because a lot of companies or the Chinese companies, they just put any numbers on there. And there, there are some standard companies, so we don't know what's what. So, it's better to have a pool test as well. So, when you actually fall in the water, you know that you are actually floating. So, that is a good test to do. If you are 50 kg means, what type of... Uh so, you, you, you can buy a life jacket which is rated for 50 kilos. Also, there's different kind of life jackets. Some life jackets uh, have a headrest as well. So, what they are there for. And one thing, like I said, the boat can capsize. That's number one. And you, you could be a good swimmer. Number two, when you're going out on the water, there's a chance that the other boat can come and hit the boat. So it can collide and can come with an accident. So for those instances, and if for instance, you are injured on the boat and you fall on the water. So what happens? There are life jackets which has got like a headrest. So what happens? Even if you fall unconscious in the water, the headrest will actually keep your head up this way. 
not this because the float is here so when you fall in the water it will still keep your head up so there are different types of pdfs as well so you can go for the right type that you want but like i said to start with the basic any basic one for your weight uh, specifications should do the job anything else signal? mobile signal normally in chennai you get about depending on the company as well but no, normally uh, i have atel and jio and i've had reception up to probably about 8 kilometers straight out till there so normally we are trawling only uh, close to the shore so you'll have receptions there no issues but once you cross the 8 kilometer mark on and off some don't work at all some work and intermittent signal sometimes you get and it will go sometimes it works in 14 kilometers also any good locations on the ecr side ECR side, Kolam side is good. Kolam side is good. Again, use the Navian caps there as a wreck in Kolam side as well. So it helps you. Sitting here, I can identify wrecks in Mangalore also. So use that app. So go to the wreck, use the app, and you'll see where your boat is. So when you are on the app, it shows your boat symbol, and the wreck is there. When you're moving, it will show you that you're moving close, close, close. And when you're on top, it will show your boat on top. So that helps you identify the wrecks. Wrecks are good spot for jigging as well. So jigging will be more productive. Navion. Navionics. Navionics. N A V I O N I C S. Navionics. That's the world's most popular map that every boat has. Even the Garmin, Lawrence, any GPS, just a unit. But inside they have the Navionics card. So it's like the world's leading map provider. Navionics comes in very handy. Anything else? Uh, what are the lures that you shouldn't roll? Then? Uh, you can troll most of the lures. Most of the lures which... Poppers, no, that's an interesting question. Normally, no one trolls a popper. But I know one person who has actually trolled poppers in Malvin and he's got huge GTs. But he slow trolls them. He's got two, three poppers in the back and slow trolls them and he can actually catch them. Or when you're going in deeper water, you can use uh, something like this. is a big size for Malvin. This is similar to a popper actually. This is called a skirted lure. So what do you have? You have the hooks rigged here. And you are trawling this. So what this does is this is similar to a popper where it creates a lot of uh, bubbles and noise and pushes the water. So this one actually attracts. And this one is a lure that we use for marlin, sailfish and tuna. So it's similar to a popper. Like I said, you can still try a popper and you might be lucky and you might get a jeep. Should work well. Provided you are getting a Chinese lure and make sure that you are actually changing the hook. Better to get branded uh, lures. There are good trawling lures of 500 bucks. But if you happen to use a Chinese one, make sure that you actually change the hooks. That, that way. Are specifically made for uh, trolling. Yeah, yeah. All, anything with the lip. Anything with the lip. Anything with the lip is a trolling and spinning lure. So anything that you can spin, you can troll as well. Okay. But each, like I said, each lure will have a different trolling speed. The weight doesn't matter. Weight. So the based on the 25 feet, and this one is a smaller lip. So the lip is what makes it dive deeper or whatever it is. Okay. So normally they're not heavy. They're light. They're hollow inside, and uh, it just it dives based on the lip's shape. It's all scientifically done. Like I said, most of the brands, they work well. But the popular ones that here that we use on our shore are Halkos and Rapalas and uh, the Zerik. There are a few good models there as well. But the, most of the lows will work. But these are the most popular ones that have been used on our shores. Probably uh, that's also another good question. I want to call the wire leader also. For, uh, f normally, I use ATLB. Uh, mono on my trawling setup or max 100 do not do not use uh, wire leader it's personal choice i feel that the wire leader actually spoils the lures action some people say i don't want to lose a lure obviously when you're fishing you will lose lure if you want more natural action if you're using a metal leader it's going to be stiff and the fish is going to shake like this but if you're using a mono line it's going to look more natural and it's going to give that natural action so that's how I would fish. Normally I don't fish wire, but if you want to use wire leaders, there are wire leaders which are available with snap trays and all that. Some commercial fishermen use that because they don't want to lose lure. They're always on there. They find that lure is quite expensive. But being anglers, uh, personally I use only uh, leaders. I don't use wire. Wire spoils the action, if you ask me. So 80 to 100 is an ideal leader to use while trawling. And the length of the leader also matters. Uh, Probably I would use anything from 1.5 to 2 meter idly for trolling. Hope this session was informative and I want you guys to catch a lot of fish. So that's why I wanted to have this first session. And if you guys want us to cover any other topic in the future, uh, 
sessions i'm happy to cover that and uh, to inc increase the um, sure catch rate yeah. sure yes sure. sure fishing with south blues yeah yeah. yeah yeah i'll have another session where i'll explain that in yes yeah sure uh, yeah sure. I'll, i'll cover that in the next session definitely that is, that is what the it is very much productive i think yeah from shore fishing soft plastic is good uh, these days because it looks more natural so the fish grabs it it feels more natural doesn't let go it swallows it well yes so i'll do that in the next session thanks guys thanks for coming Thank subscribe to our channel and there'll be more uh, videos to help all the angling community thank you